I have never seen Gravity Falls, but that changes today as I try to learn the Gravity Falls lore by watching a timeline video. The complete Gravity Falls timeline. Let's get educated. It's no mystery when it comes to the strange and unusual, Gravity Falls has got you covered. The Pines family first stole our hearts in 2012 and managed to keep us on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of their mystery-filled journey. In fact, we here at Channel Frederator love the series so much that we've decided to revisit the series from the very beginning. And no, we're not talking about when Dipper and Mabel showed up, we're talking the very beginning. I'm Jacob, and join me as we go through the series in chronological order. The good, the bad, and especially the mysterious. Thir okay, all I know about Gravity Falls is that people like it a lot. It's one of those cartoons that people get super, super, super into, and people were really sad when it ended. And I'm pretty sure this actually has like a coherent timeline that actually makes sense. Whereas I did an Adventure Time reaction, and Adventure Time is completely off the walls, insano. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I mean, it kind of does, but it's mostly just insano. I think this is gonna be a little bit more coherent. 30 million BCE, a massive flying saucer crash lands on our planet, forming the Valley of Gravity Falls and making it a hub of weirdness throughout history. 1000 AD. The first human natives of Gravity Falls flee the land for unknown reasons, leaving behind a treasure trove of ancient artifacts. Many of the artifacts depict the likeness of a certain one-eyed triangle man. Eh, whatever. Not important. 1837. Sir Lord Quentin Tremblay III Esquire is elected the... Wait, wait, wait. The eighth and a half president of the United States? How do you, how do you be half a president? Eighth and a half president of the United States after winning the election in a literal landslide victory. He quickly- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God damn it. That was such a dumb joke and it got me. A landslide, like- a landslide came down and killed everyone. He becomes known as the country's silliest president, which is why you've never heard of him. 1842. Quentin Tremblay is kicked out of office and accidentally discovers the uncharted land of Gravity Falls after riding his horse backwards off a cliff. Quentin founds the settlement and deems himself mayor. 1862. Quentin Tremblay mysteriously disappears. The government initiates the Northwest cover-up and nominates local waste-shoveling village idiot Nathaniel Northwest to become the new town mayor in his stead. Northwest is also credited as the founder founder of Gravity Falls to further cover up Tremblay's existence. Okay, so we're doing a whole lot of goofiness, a whole lot of goofs and gas. The 1940s to the early 1950s. Twins Stanley and Stanford Pines are born in Glass Shard Beach, New Jersey to Phil Brick and Karen Pines. They're raised in the family pawn shop within the lead paint district of the city. Early 1960s. The two lead are an paint? unstoppable pair with dreams of becoming full-time adventurers. Stanley develops a punch-first, ask-questions-later personality which pairs perfectly with Ford's mental brilliance. While exploring their hometown of Glass Glass Shard Beach, they find remnants of an old ship in a nearby cave. They begin to rebuild it, dubbing the boat the Stana War, and plan to use it to sail around the world together as treasure hunters. But they shipwreck in Gravity Falls, that's my prediction. 1970s. During their senior year of high school, Stan and Ford are called to the principal's office where they learn that Ford's science project has attracted the interest of West Coast Tech, a prestigious college. Ford is Congratulations. naturally excited about the opportunity, which upsets Stan since he's still holding on to their childhood dream of becoming treasure hunters. Frustrated over the idea of losing his brother, Stan accidentally damages Ford's science project, a perpetual motion machine, causing the project to malfunction and Ford to lose the opportunity of a- This dog made a perpetual motion machine? I mean, can't he just, like, make another one? Assuming that it didn't work, he's like, oh man, it didn't work, but it's a perpetual motion machine. This is something that everyone needs. If you just fix it up, like, it might be damaged, but surely he knows how to make it. He's made it once, he can make it again. You just fix it up, and then you get them, you say, look, it's actually working now. Come on, come on, come on back. Look, it's working now. Lifetime. The two ultimately fall out, and Stan is kicked out of the family for losing them potential millions with Ford's inventions. Stan leaves home and starts his own business. Meanwhile, Ford enrolls in Backups More University to make up for his lost opportunity. 1972 to Just make another one! That's the most- it's like the most valuable piece of technology that could ever exist. It, doesn't a perpetual motion machine generate basically infinite energy? This could solve energy crises around the world! <laughs> Stan story. Stan founds Stanco Enterprises and tries to sell poorly made household appliances. These faulty appliances give Stan a bad rap as he's soon considered a con man and chased out of New Jersey. Unfortunately, this becomes an ongoing trend for Stan as a traveling salesman. He's eventually banned- He's got, he's got a little plasters called Rip Off. Stan takes nothing but L's. It must suck to be that sibling that's just the inferior sibling. Like, the older brother, the other brother, just straight up better. 
He's the inferior sibling, 100%. From 32 of the 50 states, and also he's been in prison in three different countries. 1972 to 1982, Ford's story. Meanwhile, Ford works twice as hard as any other student at Backups More University. He's accepted into the doctoral program three years ahead of schedule, writes a thesis that becomes nationally ranked, and receives an enormous grant for $100,000 to apply to his field of study. He just- Nice, but he doesn't build the perpetual motion machine again, which I- Still think, I'm, I'm just gonna keep talking about this. I feel like it would be a really good idea if he did that. ...to study the supernatural and shortly after moves to Gravity Falls, the weirdness capital of the country. Immediately, Ford is entranced by his findings. He begins to keep a record of his supernatural discoveries in a special journal. Soon enough, he realizes he needs to expand his studies and create a safe space to contain his more dangerous experiments, among which are things like the shapeshifter. So he constructs an extra bunker hidden under- the shapeshifter. He just casually has a shapeshifter. This guy, he's somewhere else. ...beneath the Gravity Falls forest with a secret entrance inside an artificial tree. After a while, Ford hits a roadblock in his study. That is, until he stumbles across a cave filled with ancient writing. There's a ritual circle with various symbols and zodiac signs, seemingly for some sort of prophecy. Ford translates the writing to discover these are incantations carved next to a description of a triangular man with one eye and a top hat. However, a warning is also written, begging that these incantations Presentations never be said aloud. Okay, well, instead of like just putting a warning next to it, you should just scribble out the incantations so that no one knows of them. Therefore, they can never be said. Problem solved. You're welcome, Gravity Falls. I've just saved you. Ford ignores the warnings and summons the mysterious being who appeared Idiot. in his dream that night and introduces himself as Bill Cipher. Bill Why do the smart people always seem that they think that they are smarter than everyone else? They're like, oh no, dude, I'm totally smart. I'll handle it. I'm the smartest guy. I he did build a perpetual motion machine, so I guess he does kind of deserve that to Bill be fair. explains that he's a muse and he chooses one brilliant mind to inspire every century. The two become friends and in exchange for his knowledge of the other side, Bill asks for use of Ford's body whenever he should please, and Ford agrees. What? Bill gift he, he, what, he wants his body? It's like, Ford, give me your body to use when I please. What are you doing with that body, Bill? What are you gonna do with it? Ford the blueprints to build a portal to another dimension. To build it, Ford enlists the help of his old college friend, Fiddleford McGucket, who's specializing in personalized computers at this time. Fiddleford moves to Gravity Falls and assists Ford in building the portal. Once the portal's complete, Fiddleford is accidentally sucked inside. Ford saves him just in time, but it's obvious Fiddleford is frightened by what he's seen on the other side. He well, yeah, no wonder he went from building like personal computers that can run like Tetris and ping pong to building an extra dimensional portal to another universe? I'd be a bit concerned too, to be fair. Tells Ford to beware the beast with one eye and warns him that his device will undoubtedly bring about the end of times. Fiddleford leaves and invents the mind erase gun to help himself cope. He then founds a secret society called the Blind Eye where he and a group of other townsfolk are determined to help others forget their disturbing supernatural findings. However, his words, the beast with one eye so a cult. suspicious and he decides to confront Bill. When Bill admits his true plan is to merge both dimensions, Ford immediately shuts down the portal and begins taking precautions against Bill. He builds Project Mentum to encrypt his thoughts. He also begins to amend his previous journal entries with invisible ink, but that didn't seem like enough. So he abandons his- Oh, because Bill has access to his body. It's already a deal that he struck. Well, there's one way to make sure that you can't use your body. Destroy the body. And hides his journals. He then converts his second underground bunker into a fallout shelter should the worst happen and reaches out to the only person he knows he can trust, his twin brother, Stan. Late 1980s. I don't know why you thought you could trust your brother. There are some familial situations that you just can't reconcile, and having your brother get kicked to the curb, sent out, and having him basically have an absolutely shit life for years and years and years, and just writing to him be like, yo, bro, I can totally trust you, right? We're family. Just because they're family, just because they're blood doesn't mean that you can trust them. Stan arrives in Gravity Falls to see his brother for the first time in almost a decade. A and gets threatened with a crossbow immediately. Stan to take Journal 1 as far away from Gravity Falls as possible and keep it hidden. Since this is the only reason Ford wanted to see his estranged brother, Stan becomes enraged and the two fight. Stan pushes Ford into the portal and accidentally activates it. He then watches as Ford disappears into the gateway, but right before Ford vanishes, he tosses the journal to Stan. Stan well, it's a good thing that he called upon the one person that he can trust in the world. It's a good thing that he called on his brother. The person that he knew he could rely on. <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, we're really glad that Sam happened. Tries everything he can to reactivate the gateway, but nothing works. When he goes into town, though, the townspeople think that he is actually Ford, you know, since they're twins. Stan runs with it and takes up his brother's identity, as well as the cabin he was living in. The townsfolk seem very curious about the cabin itself, so Stan turns this into his next big scam. He starts charging admission to the cabin, and thus, the Mystery Shack is born. August wow, he's a piece of shit. 1999. Finally, our protagonists, Mabel and Dipper Pines, are born in Piedmont, California. They're the grandchildren of Shermie Pines, Stan and Ford's younger brother. And now we arrive at the series itself. Hey, it's about time we get- They're the grand- They're the grandchildren of- So that- Wait, they're not Stan's kids, but they're not the parents' kids. I feel like I'm an idiot. I can't figure out what their fam familial relationship is. Yeah, here. June 1st and 2nd, 2012. Tourist trapped. Mabel and Dipper Pines arrive in Gravity Falls to spend the summer with their great uncle Stan, though the cool kids call him Grunkle Stan. Great Uncle Stan. Okay, so that would imply that he, no, Stan's, Stan must have another sibling that had a kid. So Stan and the original scientist has another sibling, right? Stan. Adopted? Are they adopted? Puts him to work in the mystery shack. While posting signs in the woods, Dipper comes across a hollow tree. Inside, he finds an electronic device. This is a baby that the mom is holding when Stan gets kicked out. Oh, okay, so Stan has a sister that then has a kid. Right, okay, that makes sense. One of its two wires severed. He fiddles with some switches, causing a trap door to open in the ground containing a mysterious journal marked three. He opens the journal and sees it's filled with facts and notes about the town's strange super- Facts and notes? Bro, if I opened a book and it said, floating eyeballs, are they watching me? Giant vampire bats. I wouldn't exactly say, oh, this is filled with facts and logic. Natural anomalies. Meanwhile, Mabel announces she has a date, but her boyfriend Norman is actually a bunch of gnomes looking to take Mabel as their queen. Dipper rescues his sister and the twins return to the mystery shack. June 3rd, 2012, Legend of the Gobblewonker. Grunkle Stan takes the twins fishing at Gravity Falls Lake, where a crazed hick the locals refer to as Old Man McGucket claims to have seen a lake monster. Once Seuss, the mystery shack handyman, arrives with his own boat, the twins decide to ditch their Grunkle's lame jokes and investigate. They discover that the lake monster is actually a mechanical creation of Old Man McGucket's. June 10th- Ah, oh, come on, man. The okay, so there's a lot of, like, episodes of the week, like, opponents of the week where you just have, like, a little self-contained story in one episode, but there's gonna be the overarching story. Guys, June 11th to 13th, that contains my birthday. The 11th of June, boom, my birthday, 2012. Hand that rocks the Mabel. The twins learn that Grunkle Stan's biggest competition in town is an adorable little boy named Gideon Gleeful, aka Lil Gideon, a local psychic adored by all the townsfolk. Dipper and Mabel attend one of his shows to test his psychic abilities, and Dipper concludes that Gideon is nothing more than a con man, just like their grunkle. The next day, Gideon arrives at the shack to ask Mabel if she wants to come to his dressing room and try on some different makeup. The two become friends until he reveals he has a crush on her. The feeling isn't mutual, though, so they have a falling out, and Gideon swears revenge on the Pines family. Later that night- Revenge?! Oh my god, biggest incel. This is supposed to be like, what, an eight-year-old? Come on, dude. You don't like me? I'll destroy you! Your family! Revealed that Gideon is in possession of Journal 2. June 17th, 2012. Oh no, he's got the journal? It's Pioneer Okay, he's actually Day. plot relevant then. And the twins uncover evidence that the town's founder, Nathaniel Northwest, is a hoax. They set out to uncover the truth, ultimately so they can rub it into the insanely wealthy and entitled Pacifica Northwest's face. She's the town's popular yeah, get girl her. and a descendant of the supposed founder. While following a set of clues, they discover the government's Northwest cover-up, along with the original mayor, Quentin Tremblay, preserved he's peanut a brittle. He's Turns alive? Turns disappeared because he wanted to demonstrate Peanut Brittle's life-sustaining properties. June He's alive? What? He's alive? Oh my god, the original founder's still alive? What the hell? 2012, The Time Traveler's Pig. Grunkle Stan throws a mystery fair where Mabel wins a pig by correctly guessing its weight. She names him Waddles and makes him her new best friend. Shortly after, the twins run into Blendon Blandon, a time traveler on a mission to clean up disturbances in the timeline. They take the time machine and go back in time Wait, the time machine is just like, what, a tape measure? It looks like just one of those like tape measures that you, you pull apart. Do you measure how much time that you want to go through and then like snap it and that's how you travel through time? That's the silliest thing I've ever heard. It results in Blendon getting arrested by the Time Paradox Avoidance Enforcement Squadron. While apprehended, he swears to get revenge on the twin. What do you mean, yes? June Wait, yes, actually? Wait, is that actually true? Oh my god, it's a tape measure? That's so 20, funny. 2012, Little Dipper. Gideon attempts to exact revenge on the Pines by taking ownership of the Mystery Shack, but Grunkle Stan outcons the little con man. Gideon later reveals that he doesn't just want the shack, he wants something hidden on the property. July to August, 2012. He wants the book. He wants book number three because he has already has book number two. Dreamscaperers. Gideon summons Bill Cipher to make a deal. He requests that Bill retrieve the combination to Stan's secret safe so he can steal the deed to the shack. Dipper 
Skipper, Mabel, and Seuss witness the demon enter Stan's mind. To save Stan, they use Jer All right, this is bloody Eric Cartman. This is the same level as when Eric Cartman got that ginger kid's parents killed and then took the bodies and blended it up into chili so that he could serve the chili to the ginger kid in the day after in front of everyone, that big crowd, and I think like the Backstreet Boys or Sync or something, and then he started crying and everyone laughed at him for crying because he ate his parents. This Gideon is a psychopath. Journal 3 to find the necessary incantations to follow Bill into Stan's mind. They face off against Bill and return to reality with their grunkle safe, but Gideon manages to break into the safe using dynamite. He steals the lease and kicks the Pines family out. Why does an eight-year-old know how to use dynamite? Who taught him this? Rises. The Pines family are living with Seuss and his grandma, Abuelita, which is less than glamorous. It's no mystery shack. Gideon reveals that his true plan is to find the first journal on the property. Dipper and Mabel seek out the gnomes from the first episode for help, but Gideon turns the gnomes against the twins. With the help of his gnome allies, Gideon retrieves journal three from Dipper. Afterwards, Dipper gives up and the twins board a bus back to California. That's when oh no. Gideon realizes the journal he retrieved from Dipper is actually Journal 3, not 1. He thought there were only two. He chases the bus they were on back into Gravity Falls with his Gideon bot built. What the fuck? Where did he get this from? Why does he have Pikachu cheeks? By McGucket, of course, and faces off against the twins. The townsfolk arrive, ready to arrest the twins for harming Gideon, but before they do, Stan reveals that the- Arrest the twins for harming Gideon? He was in a 25 foot tall mecha, I'm sure he was fine. The three Gideon pins everyone received were actually cameras he used to spy on them. Gideon gets arrested and the Pines family gets their shack back. Dipper tells Stan about the journals and Stan, up to this point playing dumb about all the weirdness of Gravity Falls to the kids, takes the third one from Dipper, claiming he wants to borrow it for inspiration for the shack. That night, Stan sneaks into his secret room behind the vending machine, which takes him down to Ford's old lab. Stan oh, there it is. is now in possession of all three journals. Oh, but what is he gonna do with them? Is he gonna try and save his brother again and make up for the fact- wait, what? Wait, oh my god, I thought they had six fingers. They have five fingers. Usually in cartoons and animation, characters will have four fingers because it doesn't look too different to five fingers and it's a lot easier to animate. Cut to black, season one over. Scary Oki. Stan continues working hard on the portal, but it attracts- Wait, they have six? Oh my god, can I not count? The fuck are you talking about? That's five. Are you? Can you guys count? What do you mean? Do you have six, you fool? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, wait. We're never gonna talk about this again, chat. We're never speaking about this again. Okay, let's move the on. opening party, but then Dipper accidentally raises the dead. It happens. The Technically, the thumb's not a finger. <clears throat> Jack. After Stan tells Dipper that he's known about the strangeness of gravity falls all along, he, Mabel, and Dipper destroy the zombies after discovering their weakness is very loud karaoke music. Into the bunker. Dipper Mabel, Makes Seuss, sense. and Wendy follow the journal to a secret bunker hidden in the woods, right under the hollow tree where Dipper originally found the journal. Inside, they battle a shapeshifter that has escaped its cage. On their way out, Seuss finds a briefcase he took from the lab is actually an old laptop belonging to someone identified as F. Society of- Oh, it's now. coming together. He discovers the laptop is marked McGucket Labs, so they rush to crazy old man McGucket's junkyard to confront him. Unfortunately, McGucket claims that he's had amnesia since 1982. They they read about the Society of the Blind- Wait, 1982. The year that the trans-dimensional portal happened, right? ...die in the journal and conclude that McGucket must have had his mind erased after witnessing something. Based on a few clues and what McGucket can remember, they're led to the Society's secret headquarters, where they discover a persistent initiative to erase the townsfolk's memories. The gang retrieves the mind erase gun and uses it to erase the cult's memory. They also find McGucket's old memory tube and- Well, okay, they kept his memories in a tube? ...and discover McGucket is the founder of the Blind Eye Society and that the laptop was his. Not only that, he was in Gravity Falls assisting the journal's author in a groundbreaking experiment that disturbed him so deeply he began erasing his own memory to the point of deterioration. Dude, how traumatized do you have to be when you need to forget something so much that you blast your own brain full of memory eraser juice? Not what he seems. Stan continues to secretly work on the portal, but government agents arrive again to take him into custody for stealing drums of toxic chemicals. Dipper and Mabel attempt to clear his name with security footage, only to discover that he is in fact guilty. They also discover the lab, along with the portal, and all three journals. Dipper scans the journals with a black light to reveal- The machine was meant to create knowledge, but it's too powerful. The device, if fully operational, could tear our universe apart. I was wrong the whole time! It must not fall into the wrong hands. 
If the clock ever reaches zero, our universe is doomed. Total global destruction. Oh my god. Feel a secret message about the portal that it could destroy the entire universe. Stan escapes custody and runs back to the shack, only to be confronted by the twins in the lab. Dipper activates the manual override and threatens to shut the portal down. As the room loses gravity, everyone is lifted into the air, but Mabel manages to grab the override button. Go on, Mabel! Stan begs Mabel not to push it, but Dipper tells her to press it, since Stan has been lying to them this whole time about his true intentions. As the countdown nears its end- Wait, so why would Stan not want- to, does he want the universe to get bloated up in? Mabel decides to trust her grunkle, and when the timer runs out, the portal is activated, and a mysterious oh. figure appears. He's back! A tale of two stands. He's back! The twins learn of their second grunkle, Ford, the long sought out author of the journals. Ford and Stan tell the twins of their falling out, recalling the events that have led up to now, and why Stan was posing as Ford this entire time. The government agents arrive again to take Stan back into custody, but Dipper uses McGucket's mind erase gun to clear their memories. The last Mabel corn. Bill <laughs> That's not morally okay. Especially if it causes brain degradation over a long period of time. It's gonna turn into the old man, <laughs> old man McGucket. Ford in a dream and tells him he knows about the interdimensional rift that was created when the portal was reactivated. So Ford dismantles the portal, contains the rift, and warns his family to protect the shack. If Wait, so where was Ford this entire time? They never actually went through to see the other dimension, right? So we don't know what kind of planet he was living on. Is it, is it Earth? Or is it a totally different- Maybe we'll learn, gets actually. his hands on the portal or rift, he can open the doorway to his dimension and unleash chaos. At this point- Is it that dimension? More than a few run-ins with Bill Cipher, so they know that this isn't a threat to take lightly. Luckily, Ford knows a way to shield the shack from Bill, but it requires unicorn hair. So Mabel volunteers to retrieve it along with her friends, Wendy, Candy, and Grenda. Meanwhile- Yeah, just Ford casual unicorn hair. ...backup plan to protect their minds using Project Mentum. Dipper uses the device to encrypt his thoughts while Ford naps, but his curiosity leads him to place the helmet on Ford's head. Dipper uncovers memories of the deal between Ford and Bill, which makes him oh. believe that they're still working together. He threatens Got to exposed. erase Ford's mind, thinking that Bill is actually in possession of his body, but Ford assures Dipper it's okay and tells him of what happened between him and Bill all those years ago. Mabel and the girls finally return with the magical hair after an- so Bill, in theory, still has access to his body, right? At some point? Nasty altercation with the unicorns and use it to set up the shield. Dipper and Mabel versus the future. Mabel begins planning for her- Not anymore? Big okay. 13th birthday party, while Dipper ventures out with Ford to fix the cracking interdimensional rift. They travel down to Crash Site Omega, where the ancient alien- You got a metal plate in his head to prevent Bill? That was pretty smart. It's like wearing a tinfoil hat. Crash landed to find an alien adhesive to patch the rift. On their search, Ford offers Dipper an apprenticeship and asks that he stay in gravity falls after the summer is over. Dipper excitedly accepts, but unbeknownst to him, Mabel overheard the agreement over their shared walkie-talkies. Dipper excitedly returns home to tell Mabel about the offer, but she tells him how upset losing him would be when she has to go back to school without him. After an- Aww, that's sad. I also can't get over the fact that the main character of the show is called Dipper. Emotionally charged exchange, she grabs her backpack and runs into the woods in a huff. Suddenly, Blendin Blandin appears and offers to extend the about for her forever, so she never has to leave. All Don't make it deal with them is the interdimensional rift which just so happens to be in the backpack that she grabbed it turns out oh come on Dipper's bag by mistake she makes the deal with blendon and to her dismay realizes he was possessed by bill the whole time oh what a twist damn bill cypher came out oh he must have made a deal with bill that's why he was able to get away from the the, the authorities. Oh, get fucked up. And destroys the rift, unleashing his world upon ours. Weird Mageddon parts one through three. Bill's nightmare realm has taken over Gravity Falls. Dipper and Ford find themselves in a race against time to defeat Bill before his weirdness spreads across the entire world. Bill manages to capture Ford and burn the three journals, but Dipper escapes before he can do any more damage. Elsewhere, Gideon, who's been in a maximum security prison since season one, breaks free during the madness and races. <laughs> He's been in a maximum security prison. Prison. This is an eight-year-old child. What is going- Why does that bird have three heads? Save Bill. Dipper travels to the mall where he reunites with Wendy, and the two decide to go after Mabel. However, Gideon and his gang of discount auto warriors intervene. Gideon places them under arrest, and the two groups fight wheel to wheel in a Mad Max style race. Gideon catches the heroes, but sets- I thought this was more grounded than Adventure Time. I was not correct. ...free when Dipper calls him out on all the horrible things he's done and why Mabel will never love him back. Now freed from Gideon's grasp, Seuss, Dipper, and Wendy travel to Mabel's prison to help her escape, but once inside, they realize it's less of a prison and more of a cute fantasy land dubbed Mabel Land. The land is designed to lull its prisoners into a false sense of security by giving them exactly what they desire most. Dipper 
I mean, honestly, that sounds pretty good to be fair. He was left alone to rescue Mabel, but once he finds her, she tells him that she doesn't want to leave. Mabel arranges a trial. No, this is like having Christmas every single day. You can't have good stuff every single day. You need a contrast of good and bad and not so great and like not so bad. You can't just have good all the time. Christmas every day is not good. You can't just have dopamine and serotonin constantly. You need sadness to go along with it. Well, for Dipper to state his case, and Dipper convinces her that while reality can be disappointing, no matter what happens, they have each other. Dipper assures Mabel that he'll never leave her side, and they finally escape Mabel Land together. After reuniting with Wendy and Seuss, they head back to the Mystery Shack. The barrier Ford placed on the shack has protected it during the frenzy, making it a safe haven for locals and mystical creatures alike. Dipper convinces Stan and the refugees that they have to rescue Ford in order to defeat Bill. Meanwhile, Bill Bill realizes he can't expand his weirdness barrier beyond Gravity Falls, so he unfreezes Ford for answers. Ford claims it's due to the natural weirdness magnetism in Gravity Falls caused by the alien ship. There is a way to break through, but he'll never tell him, of course. Meanwhile, McGucket has converted the shack into a giant battle mech of sorts. How do you kill Bill Cypher? He looks like this extra dimensional being. He's like a weird kind of Cthulhu creature. There's no way to actually... Do you think you could just shoot him. No one's tried that, right? Just shooting Bill Cypher, just like snipe him with a gun. Also, this is a house mecha. What's going on with this? Sorts, and they head toward Bill's pyramid. Jesus Christ, this is quite the situation we found ourselves in. Crikey, we've got mecha versus whatever these creatures are. Looks like some weird chaos demons from 40k. And then we got, of course, the floating pyramid. So here's my theory. Here's what you do. You transport him to a dimension where he cannot escape and he cannot, he just has no power. He can't teleport out of it. He's trapped in the dimension and also he can't do any harm. So he's locked in there forever because you can't kill, if you can't kill him with a gun, you can't like hit him with a hammer. Then you transport him to an alternate dimension and lock him in there. Let's see. Face him. Once inside, the refugees battle it out with Bill's henchmen. He freezes Ford once more and attacks the shack but can't break through the unicorn barrier. The newly dubbed Shackatron rips Bill's eye out, causing him to what? take some time to regenerate. Mabel grabs okay. the Ford statue and Gideon tells her how to unfreeze all of the frozen townsfolk. All the townsfolk are changed back to normal, including Ford. Ford then grabs a can of blue spray paint and begins to paint the Zodiac on the ground, including all ten symbols that represent ten of the characters there today. It's all a part of the prophecy he discovered years ago that was carved into the wall of the ancient natives. They oh, okay. stand on their respective symbols and hold hands to create a ring of energy around the Zodiac. Stan refuses to complete the circle, though, until Ford thanks him for bringing him back to this realm. Are you fucking serious, Stan? You made this problem in the first place! Well, no, Ford did, technically, because he, you know, brought Bill Cipher into the universe and all that. But he was the one that put him into the other, other dimension! They wouldn't have had this problem! If it wasn't for bloody Stan being an asshole his entire life! Has this bro had any character development? He has a good reason. Because he, because he didn't, he didn't thank him. Come on, like, man, not this situation. Now's not the time. You can be mad at your brother for being like, oh, I'm, I'm upset that you didn't thank me. You know, you've always looked down on me our entire lives. That upsets me. You have that conversation and you do therapy afterwards. You do it afterwards. Not when the climax of the story is happening. He's just like, no, I'm not going to save the universe because I'm a bit upset, actually. I'm a little bit upset. Dude, dude just go to therapy afterwards. Come on. Ford eventually does thank him, but considering the circumstance, it's kind of forced. Unfortunately, the tension between the brothers runs too high and a fight breaks out between the two. As a result, the barrier is broken and Bill returns. Ah, oh, for God's sake. Bill Zodiac away, captures Stan and Ford, and chases the twins throughout the pyramid. In I, I want Bill to win, though. You know what? I don't like either of these brothers. I want Bill to win. Inside their cage, Stan and Ford lament over their fighting. Ford decides to let Bill inside his mind to learn how to escape Gravity Falls so the twins can be saved. Bill happily enters his mindscape, only to discover that, oh, it's not Ford's mind, it stands. He disguised oh, himself in order for Ford to erase his memory with Bill inside. Ford destroys Bill, and the portal to the Nightmare Realm closes. Oh my god, wait, so he goes into Stan's mind, and then he does the memory eraser on Stan's mind to erase the memory. You think that Bill would kind of, like, think about something like that? You think he'd be a little bit smaller than that? You think as an extra-dimensional godlike being, he'd be able to be like, Oh, I should not put my entire self into this memory. I should only put a portion of myself just to check, just to have a look-see. 
just to have a gander. They did a little trickery, it seems. August 31st, 2012. Gravity Falls is back to normal, or as normal as it can be, including What the fuck? Is that a zombie? Took a little time to regain his memory after having it wiped by Ford. The entire town gets together for Dipper and Mabel's 13th birthday. Ford and Stan make up, and Ford asks Stan to accompany him on an adventure to investigate anomalies out in the Arctic Ocean and finally live out their childhood dream. Stan agrees and promotes Seuss to the manager of the Mystery Shack. And that would moves in immediately. September That's cute. 1st, 2012 and onwards. At some point in the near future, Stan and Ford are adventuring into the Arctic Sea aboard the Stan o War 2, and Seuss runs the Mystery Shack. The Northwests lose their mansion due to a risky investment in weirdness bonds and McGuckin movies <laughs> instead, and the twins say their goodbyes and head back to Piedmont, California, ending the greatest summer of their lives. Aw, that's cute. You know what? I think that Bill got too overconfident. As a multi-dimensional being, he should be smarter than this. He should have known. Just have a gander. Don't go in whole hog. He was too overconfident. He thought he'd won. He's like, oh, GG's, it's done. I'd probably make the same mistake, but I can't float and use special magic powers. So he should know better than that. It looks like a pretty interesting show. The lore, very, very cool. I uh, don't have to watch it now, but I hope you enjoyed this reaction to the Gravity Falls lore. If you want me to react to anything, let me know in the Discord server.